Hey everybody, it's um, early September and I'm here with a container that I planted um, in May this year. And do you ever have those containers that just don't do what you really hope, them, hope they would do all year? Um, this one, it has had some bright spots this summer, but some of the things just never really took off or they've they looked good for a while and then they faded in the heat. And now it's September, as I just mentioned, and we still have several weeks of good weather ahead of us and we're probably five or six weeks out from our average first frost date and even after that this container could look good well into fall and even early winter and so um, if i just make a few changes to it so i'd like to kind of walk you through what i'm planning to do with this container today not only were a few things disappointing here with the plants in this container but um, a few weeks ago, I also backed up. I'm here on my patio by my back step, and I backed up, and I fell backwards right into this whole grouping of containers. So even some of the plants that weren't struggling are, you know, then they started to struggle after I landed on them. So um, there's just a few things we need to do to kind of fix that up. And so uh, I just thought I'd tell you a little bit about the plants. This is a papyrus plant, and I really like this in my containers because it looks good right now. It's looked good all summer. It's just gotten bigger and more, more of these. Um, these uh, cool shapes at the top and uh, it actually this is one of the plants that I often leave in my containers even in the winter time and uh, because they you know they don't live they're they're dead by then they they um, after it gets too cold they die uh, but they maintain their shape all winter and these it's, it's just it's really cool they look really nice and so uh, that's one thing that I will definitely be keeping in this container um, in, in addition, there's this salvia that um, it's gotten kind of lanky now, but it's been really great this summer because it has these blooms. This is, um, this is a salvia that the hummingbirds love, and because it's by my back door here, um, the, I just love watching it because we leave the door open a lot, and there's just hummingbirds in and out of here all day long. So I will also see if I can clean that up a little bit and um, leave it in the container. We have some straw flowers here that looked really great early in the se early in the season, but uh, the um, the heat they just don't like the heat, so they kind of faded out. And but but the thing is, now that it's getting cooler, I, I was going to pull this out of this pot uh, honestly, but now that it's getting cooler, they're starting to get blooms again, and it's looking pretty good. So I may just clean that up and leave it too. We'll see what happens. The Gerbera daisy looked pretty good all summer. Um, you know, they bloom on and off and um, it, it, the foliage still looks nice, but there's no buds down in here and um, I, I just don't think there'll be much to, it, in the next several weeks, I, it just, there won't be much happening. So I'm going to pull that one for sure. And then I had this petunia that I just love this color um, of petunia, but when it got hot, the petunia kind of um, faded and doesn't look so good and it still doesn't look so good. So I'm going to pull that as well. And then finally, I have this uh, sedum here, and this is Angelina sedum that I just dug from my garden actually last year and put it in this pot as kind of a, a spiller around the edge. And it remained in this pot all winter last year, and I just left it now because I am nothing if not very frugal when it comes to plants and gardening. And so uh, this was a really great, inexpensive way to get a nice... Uh, uh, spiller at the edge of the pot and I'll definitely be leaving that too because they get nice uh, fall you know fall color and it's it's just kind of fun in there so nice texture so with that why don't we go ahead and get started the first the first thing I'm going to do is dig out uh, some of the plants that I'm not planning to keep you'll notice this might be a job because by the end of summer a lot of times the roots get really filled in and start taking up a lot of potting mix and actually that's one other thing that might make this pot better is that I'm having a hard time keeping it watered and part of that is because there's just so many plants and so many roots in the pot but the other thing is it's been hard to water all summer because I this is where my cheapness kind of came back to bite me this last spring I ended up buying some really cheap potting mix at the grocery store. I don't know why, I just did. And I put it in this pot, and I have been sorry all summer actually about that because I just can't keep it watered. It was kind of powdery and just not a very good texture. It doesn't hold water. And so um, I'm gonna get as much of that out of there as I can too. So with some better potting mix in there and just freshening it up, uh, it might be easier because it's been pretty warm lately. And I mean, I, you just don't, I just don't normally think I should have to water every day in the fall. That's one thing in July and August, but in the fall, no, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not willing to do that anymore. So um, let's get started. 
All right, so I'm all gloved up and I have my favorite uh, garden tool, the soil knife here that has a serrated edge. I'm probably going to need to saw through some of the uh, roots um, as I'm digging things out of the middle of this pot. So let's just uh, get in here and see what we have. I probably can just pull the petunia out just like that. I'm just gonna, oh, there's a little weed in there. And then as I go, I not only do I wanna take the take the uh, petunia out, but I really want to get that soil out of there because it's just, it's just a packed, tight little ball of uh, roots in there. And the more I can um, kind of loosen that up, the better. But at the same time, I don't want to damage the roots too badly of the, the plants that are already in there. So uh, the plants that I want to keep. So let's see what we can do here. And here's the Gerbera daisy. And I don't mind if I have to uh, dig out some of the sedum as I go because that is pretty resilient and there's plenty of it. So I really love this serrated edge, as I told you, uh, that just really saws through things nicely. Oh, here's uh, Jewels of Opar that I put in there too. That never really took off, as you can see. I don't know. <laughs> Look how small that is. <laughs> okay, there's the Gerbera daisy. And so I'm just going to kind of dig out as much, as much uh, potty mix as I can get out of here without damaging any of the other plants too much. And I know I said I wanted to keep this uh, straw flower, but it's really brittle and I'm having a hard time not damaging it as I'm uh, digging around it here. So we'll see what happens. I don't know if it'll be worth keeping or not. We'll see. I'm just trying to loosen soil up that isn't full of roots now because I don't want to damage the roots of the remaining plants. which there are a lot of roots in here. You've probably noticed when you're pulling pots in the, in the fall, when you're cleaning them up sometimes, I mean, there have been times when I can take this whole, I could lift, I could pull by this and the whole, the whole uh, root ball, the whole potting mix would just come out in one solid piece, just completely filled with roots. And it's almost created its own little, sh it's, well, it's created its own shape within the size of the uh, pot. So that's just how much the roots grow over the course of the year. So anyway, we have a nice little um, channel of open space here. And I think the next thing I'll do is start to clean up and cut back the plants that are here so I can see um, how much, how much, um, you know, what we need and how much room there is and just kind of like how good they, how good they even look after they've been cleaned up. Because when you're planting something in the fall, I mean, I really want instant impact. I don't want to, I don't have the luxury of, the spring plantings where I am sort of planting them and expecting them to, them to fill in and, and get better and better. This is, they need to look good now. So if it's not looking that good, I'm probably going to pull it. So I'm going to start by just cutting back all the pieces of um, straw flower and kind of pulling off the dead foliage. This is promising. There's little buds forming here, so I think that's great. But like I said, it's so brittle, I just broke a little bud off. That's difficult. And actually, maybe for this one, it would be better if I took my gloves off. I'm normally a gloves person, but this straw flower is so brittle. It might be better. And just snip off the dead ones and the dead leaves here. Straw flowers are really brittle, but they are so pretty, and I love this color. I loved it in the spring. I love it even more right now. It's great for fall. I tend to go with a kind of a warm colors for my color schemes because I have a brick house. So I'm usually looking for reds and oranges and purples and yellows. Okay, that looks pretty good. There's some flowers. If I, it might just be too lanky, but we'll see what happens. 
So uh, now I'm ready to cut the uh, salvia back a bit. And I'd like to try to encourage some growth down lower, but I don't know if there's enough time for that this fall. But in any case, uh, we'll cut off the, the dead stems and the calices that, they're, that are almost gone. And like I said, the hummingbirds have just loved this plant this summer. So I really don't want to get rid of it altogether because I like to keep those hummingbirds coming. In fact, we were just shooting here a little bit ago and one flew up while I was standing here. It almost started eating. I don't know if it didn't see me or it just didn't care. But I love watching them out the back door. This papyrus doesn't really need too much cleanup. There's just some brown, brown growth and brown kind of dead things that I'll just peel off just to tidy it up a little bit. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to do too much cutting here. That one doesn't, that one looks like it could use it. That one's going down, so I'll cut that out as well. All right, so I've uh, cut everything back and I've uh, dug out some of the soil and now I've been uh, kind of tucking plants in their pots in here to see what we think, to see what I think about uh, kind of the arrangement and the mix of plants and the mix of colors. And um, I think, I think it needs another yellow on this side maybe. And it's tight, it'll be tight even without the pots, but especially with the pots, it's kind of tight. And I'm pretty happy with this mix here. Uh, we have the yellows kind of pulling throughout. There's purples repeated in different spots. There's reds repeated in different spots. There's different heights. There's a mix of um, textures and flowers and, and bear, or, you know, the, the pepper um, berries or pepper fruits. And some of these plants will just keep getting better and better um, as the weather gets cooler, like the kale and the shard. And um, there are several buds on these zinnias, and they can take a little bit of cool weather, and so they'll, they'll also keep blooming. They won't get taller, but they'll keep blooming. And then these um, peppers will look good, you know, as the weather gets cooler, too. They won't be forming more, um, more peppers, but the colors that are there, there's plenty there, and there's lots of color. So I'm excited to start planting this up. So I've rearranged things just a little bit from my original um, thought on this uh, to get some of the foliage separated a little bit and uh, get the distribution of um, color a little bit better. And uh, wow, some of these plants are pretty tight in here, so I'm uh, having to uh, loosen up the root balls a little bit and uh, take some of the roots out and it's just so they'll fit into the, the pot. And uh, that I'm going to set in kind of high so it tips out the edge of the container a little bit and you can see it. Now that arrangement looks pretty good. Now I need to um, kind of tuck in around the plants with some new soil. There isn't, there isn't a lot of room in there, but there uh, definitely I don't want any air pockets. So I'm just kind of um, dumping and pouring and this sedum is going to look like a mess for a few days because it's been kind of stirred up and also there's soil covering some of the leaves and things, but that's okay. It'll, it'll straighten itself out over time. But I'm just tucking, um, looking for air pockets where I can tuck. See how nice and barky that is? That, that's, that's a good potty mix. Um, and uh, so I can uh, just tuck, tuck around the air pockets and get everything in there well. All right, now I'm going to water this container in and uh, keep checking the soil, the potting mix over the next couple of days to see if there's any air pockets that I mixed. And then we should be having a great uh, colorful and texture filled uh, fall container for several weeks. Hi, I'm Jack from Garden Gate Magazine. I hope you enjoyed our video. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel, 
and press the bell to get notified every time we upload a new video. You'll get content with useful garden tips, design ideas, and how-to help for all levels of gardeners. I especially enjoy the garden tours and walks with fellow gardeners across the country. Be sure to follow us on all of our social platforms. See the list below. Thanks for watching.